uh, at the outset, I should thank uh, the organizers, uh, Dr. Nilesh Gaurav and uh, Shashank Jekar for giving me this opportunity. And uh, usually when they are introducing the speakers, they may use exaggerated uh, uh, um, introduction. I am uh, not a real that sort of expert, but uh, still I keep working in the microscopy area. That is my fascination. And um, today I am uh, asked to talk about uh, STEM, HRTEM and EDS analysis in transmission electron microscope. That is what I am asked to talk about. I will make an attempt. I may have to, uh, I may not be having that sort of privilege to go extremely slowly carrying all of you together because it is fairly vast uh, thing what we have to discuss. <coughs> and um, so that way I will just explain wherever it is the concepts, certain basic concepts and uh, put a few illustrations. Um, then it is all there for you to explore further, that is where it is. Um, it is a rather very prophetic, uh, if you see the statement uh, by Nobel laureate Feynman, uh, who is again considered to be the person who came out with the idea of nanomaterials, nanoparticles, everything nanotechnology evolved over that. Uh, uh, this is from his book, uh, what it says is that, that is where it is. If you, at that time when he wrote this, the microscope had, he, he lamented saying that only trouble is that electron microscope is 100 times too poor. That is where the status was in 50s and 60s. And, um, um, and he says that if it can be made more powerful, electron microscope, uh, he saw that electron microscope is only the prospect and he felt that if it can be made more powerful then we have a neater way of analyzing or we have everything under uh, our control or uh, at least the tools which are essential to look at materials at that level is available. And I will illustrate uh, in the course of the talk that we have done that. We have tried to do that challenge what he posed and presently we have made it 100 times better. Okay. And when initially, okay, we can just uh, see this. Uh, um, uh, this, this is the first microscope uh, which was there uh, invented uh, uh, um, and uh, these are the uh, two uh, uh, scientists, uh, uh, Raska and uh, Noel. Uh, they found that uh, or they designed the first TM which had a resolution of 100 angstroms. Today we stand at a resolution of 1 angstroms or a fraction of angstroms. That is how that we have made 100 times better uh, uh, sort of uh, in terms of resolution, we have been able to do that. And uh, if you see the TM capability, uh, uh, these are all the worst possibilities. And um, uh, in the morning, uh, uh, one session was there on basic TM where you would have been exposed to this part and this part. And I will just uh, try to give you some basic insights into this and this. And this we are not touching at all, although that is another spectroscopy possible, but just a few illustrations will be there, uh, uh, but we are not uh, touching upon this at all. So that is what it, what it is like. And um, what makes electrons so ideal for exploring materials to a level of going down to atomic scale or one angstroms or even a fraction of angstroms. Some of that comes from this uh, certain characteristics of electrons. First of all, electrons is a, uh, uh, is a, uh, has this character wave of particle duality. It is a wave at the same time it is particle. And in uh, whole of our transmission electron microscopy, for certain technique we exploit the capability or the character of uh, electron as a wave and certain other situations or other techniques we are exploiting the character of electron as a particle. So, both of that we exploit and bring in te techniques to just explore the uh, material like. And uh, uh, some of that is uh, uh, listed out here. Um, uh, so, I will just uh, uh, one uh, uh, point I would like to highlight uh, when we talked about X-ray, we were telling that um, we look forward to 
synchrotron to give us powerful X-rays to explore the materials like. And your electron microscope is almost a synchrotron present in your lab and it can do give some informations which are very close to that or some of the analysis of this thing. Uh, results are the some of the data obtainable is uh, of that set of level and um, there are certain if you take yields certain things which we do in a synchrotron using uh, x-rays we can obtain that information from yields studies like. Um, so XRD electron diffraction pattern TM uh, uh, imaging they are all extremely complementary. That is how the, even the organizers placed it together. Uh, although it uh, told us electron diffraction, the title, maybe you would have not made it so much look like electron diffraction. But all the same, when you do imaging also, imaging how an image happens or uh, uh, electron diffraction pattern, everything is because of scattering that diffraction phenomena, that is where it is like. You will see that whatever X X-ray uh, uh, HRTM images, what we are obtaining, that is also a diffraction effect, electron diffraction effect. Okay, that is what it is like, and um, uh, that is the first microscope, which was built. And when we saw that, that was not catering to all our needs, or it was very very poor uh, in terms of resolution. There were efforts to uh, increase the resolution, and this was one of the microscope, uh, a, a thousand kV microscope, one million volt electron microscope, and uh, a huge structure in itself. Okay. And um, this was able to give you a resolution of about uh, 1.2 angstroms or that set of uh, rain. Okay, that was the microscope. Then, in our pursuit to just get that set of machine, which can just uh, get us closer and closer to that atoms, atomic uh, sizes, this was the machine which uh, uh, were built. And this is one of the illustration uh, micro microscope at Osaka University in Japan. And this is the whole structure, which uh, runs into hundreds of feet. That was what that. And uh, the operator is going to sit here. That is the operator's place to sit. And this is a whole structure. That's what was that. That is the sort of dimension of design and uh, instrument required to go to that numbers. That is where it is. In that sort of scenario, we were just, that sort of scenario we had, that we were just uh, 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 in that sort of situation that we were playing with giants like. But of course, with all the innovation and all, this, this number which was there with that Osaka microscope with a 3 million electron volt with that resolution. Now with all the innovations and all, these are the machines which has come up. With a sort of resolution, sub-band stones. So this is a Titan, machine called Titan by that is a company which provides that. This is the Zeiss one. There is a GEOL version also and uh, this is the sort of uh, KV required from million we have just come brought it to uh, uh, 300 KV and see the resolution that is far better than what was achieved with that huge gigantic structure. So that is what it was that and uh, we are having this machine in our campus uh, which is uh, uh, recently opened for users. and. Uh, that is what it is. Our machine will be able to give not that number, it will be able to give one angstrom's uh, resolution. So that is what it is like. And this is the other microscope what we have in our material science and engineering department. This is a 200 kV mi microscope and um, it has a resolution capability of 1.4 angstrom's. That is what it is. This is the latest model of the TM, uh, a model which was released in uh, 2015. Say you used to have that column, huge structures and all, this is what it is going to look like or this is the model which has come. Of course, uh, uh, you do not have the size imagination there. Okay. Uh, this may be about, uh, about uh, uh, one and a half meter and the height is about uh, two, two meters or a little bit more than two meters. So that is what it is and this side it may be about uh, two or uh, uh, two and a half meter. That is one box. And uh, you will insert the sample, you, you can open here and this is where the specimen holder is placed. After that everything is controlled or played around with a computer and a mouse. That is what it is like. 
and you really are not interacting with the microscope. So everything can be, and these are the microscopes which can be uh, used uh, remotely also. We can have a machine here, you can from anywhere, once we place the sample, from anywhere you can maneuver and do all the studies what you want to do. So that is the set of uh, uh, things that is happening in terms of microscopy. So that is the interior of this microscope and a few uh, details. Okay, those details are not so relevant, that's why I'm just uh, skipping those this thing. The whole basis, how we are able to use electrons in uh, this analysis illustrated here in a different form you would have seen in the other presentations on SEM and TM, okay, this uh, basic interaction. So this is where the coherent electron beam is sent. How coherent it is makes you uh, what you can do and what you cannot do. And we want a extremely, when we talk about uh, uh, high resolution electron microscopy, we want a extremely coherent beam. That is where most of the high resolution work is done with a field emission gun, which, is, uh, which, is, which will be able to give you that set of uh, coherency required of the beam. So that is what it is. After going through the sample, and also you are aware of uh, that uh, you have to make your sample thin. Again, I think that in the previous uh, talk uh, on uh, basic TM, you would have been able to, you would have been told what is the set of uh, specimen requirement and other this thing. Once you have this uh, specimen thin enough, then your beam goes through and just you have this, all these possible uh, interaction products. So now you are, uh, you, these are available, you take them, exploit them, develop techniques over that, each technique will be able to do something, some information, that is how we do the microscopy. And uh, so when we take electrons, uh, we associate with that the wave character. And um, uh, the way a wave uh, which is shown here will have a amplitude, that is this amplitude part and a phase. So the phase part, this is the phase part. So uh, that is what it is. And now when you are doing, I told that all those signals are there, you can exploit that, come out with techniques to just uh, uh, obtain information about the material. because. Okay, so uh, you can just, uh, many techniques are, um, are uh, exploiting this amplitude variation. So there you get uh, what are called as amplitude contrast. And certain techniques exploit these phase variations. Okay, these phase variations. And um, uh, that is what uh, uh, those uh, group of uh, techniques are called as a phase contrast uh, microscope techniques like. And that is listed here, okay. If you take uh, amplitude contrast, these are the amplitude contrast uh, uh, set of uh, imaging techniques. And these are the uh, phase contrast techniques like. I'll try to illustrate uh, some of these uh, illustrative figures. I think that you would have been uh, uh, shown enough illustrations of this. Uh, in the previous talk on TM. And uh, this is the basic uh, modes of operation. Again, you would have been uh, exposed to this. And uh, the EM, you have this whole uh, trail of uh, lenses and uh, the radio diagram illustrates how the beam is uh, coming. And um, then uh, this is a, a typical image and this is a typical diffraction pattern and you will be able to obtain from your sample, okay, uh, your uh, specimen is sitting here, okay. You can obtain the image as well as the diffraction. Diffraction is a crystallographic information. So what the X-ray gives is mostly diffraction, occasionally imaging. So you would have just uh, seen some uh, mention about uh, tomography, possibility of tomography or X-ray uh, uh, imaging, so that is uh, where you see something as an image, uh, but here we can obtain the pattern which gives the crystallographic information and um, um, uh, again this uh, slide shows this the diffraction pattern and this is a pair of images, they are related images, one is what is called as a bright field image, 
the other is called as a dark field image again this would have been discussed to you already in the previous talk and um, then uh, to and then you have another uh, uh, type of image okay that is this image that is a high resolution image high resolution image and to obtain these images in one case you would have put a aperture in the diffraction first of all you will obtain the diffraction pattern and in the diffraction pattern you will start choosing what is what uh, is the, uh, the, the electrons which you would use to obtain your images okay and each one of that gives some information about the material so that is where it is this is the whole diffraction space your reciprocal space that photograph what you have is a is a section through your reciprocal space and if you take the diffraction patterns here this is zero order first order second order third order it will go on like that this is uh, uh, covering only up to second order here that is how the pattern is and it's a symmetric pattern these are all these spots are all having some hkl value indexable to hkl values the distances are related to the interplanar spacings the angles between arrays of spots is again relatable to the interplanar angles that is how that these patterns have all the information about the crystal structure what you have to know is the interplanar spacings and uh, angles between the planes all that information is there so by systematically analyzing that you can this you can just uh, find out the crystal structure of the material like and now in this you can just start choosing which is the diffracted signal which I would like to use at a time so that is what you do here okay for bright field you cut off all this allow only this you obtain this image then you can choose one of this any one of the diffracted spot and obtain a image which is which is related to that that you do call it as a dark field the other thing what you can do is allow many of these beams to just uh, go and interfere and create an image when you do that that product of allowing so many beams to get reconstructed a, a image uh, uh, interact and create a image in the image plane that is this this product so the aperture what is shown here okay if you allow that all these beams are allowed to just go and form that image then what you obtain is what is called as a high resolution image or a structural image and now each one of these dots is relatable to the atomic locations or columns of atoms that we are going to see in a little bit more detail that is what it is like and uh, um, so here is a typical high resolution uh, image okay high resolution image uh, see the marker here already this is uh, almost about uh, uh, 20,000 X or whatever it is okay that image itself is uh, around uh, uh, even more than that okay this number tells me at least it's uh, close to uh, 50,000 or that set of number from here you just choose uh, 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 some region here that is the structure okay uh, this part this part somewhere okay so this is uh, this phase and this is this phase and you are looking at uh, some region here these are two uh, 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 um, sort of crystallographic uh, uh, features or a defect if you want to call that's a fault it's taking fault or a twin boundary that sort of uh, this thing now further this one magnified okay so this is the marker here you see from that to this there is a 10 time magnification further 10 times from here to here approximately 10 times from there to there and this is the high resolution microscope image and these dots you will later I will just explain right now those dots are uh, dark or white whichever way you want to see they are relatable to actual atom locations so that is where their uh, real pictures of your real space crystallographic space and that is where you have just gone down to analysis or revealing the structures at atomic scale that is what it is from there you can just uh, directly work out you can just uh, uh, put uh, unit cells here 
and whatever you measure here is direct measurements of your lattice constants. That is where it is. That is where whatever you do in high resolution, they are directly related to the real space. Like. Um, just before going to high resolution, I was asked at the uh, uh, Sage uh, to include a little bit about um, the, uh, or I myself told that we have to talk about uh, uh, STM also, because that also gives you information at um, the, the uh, um, uh, at atomic scale. Okay? It is not going to play with the phase. It's, uh, it's going to use, I, I told that when the sample are hit by a coherent beam, there are various signals. It uses another signal. Okay? It uses basically inelastically scattered electrons. That is what it is going to use. And um, I wanted to put that in perspective. So illumination you can do in two different ways. Okay? So this is one way of illumination. Where you are wanting to put a parallel beam onto the sample. This is the sample. You would like to put a parallel beam. That is what you do for your regular TM. Your, uh, 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 in fact, your regular uh, uh, diffraction when you want to do. You would like to make this as parallel as possible. The more parallel or perfectly parallel, you are going to get the best results. That's where it is like. And even your uh, HRTEM images, you would like to have a parallel beam. Okay, as parallel as possible, as coherent as possible. Then you get a better quality of imaging. That's what you do. And for certain analysis, certain uh, situations, you want an extremely focused beam. What is that extremely focused beam? If you can make it one nanometer, two nanometer, that is the beam we would like to have. And when we talk about this, we want it a few micron meters in dimension. Okay? And uh, that is where, on some other occasions, we are having the beam very, very wide. 10 micron meter or 30 micron meter is the width. It's a parallel beam. And some other applications, you make it focused, bring it to a nano scale, nano uh, uh, two, uh, 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 best possible is one nanometer. I'll put up those numbers later. Some more table will be there showing what is the numbers, what we have been able to achieve. So you can make it. Then you have an analysis capability at that sort of uh, looking at, probing at that sort of fine uh, sizes. And, uh, uh, and when you have put this, the scattering events can take place and that is what is this uh, stem based on. In a stem, you want in this conventional stem, okay, what you were uh, spoken about in the previous before lunch talk, basic uh, transmission electron microscopy, all that we do in this mode. And some of that what I am going to talk, you are going to do that. HRTEM you do with this and EDS and STEM you do with this. So, uh, there are uh, lenses, a series of lenses in the microscope. Okay, there are uh, at least uh, minimum six lenses in a transmission electron microscope. Uh, it refers to those. Okay, so uh, when you are doing that, this is how you make a probe. This is an electron source, and this is the first condenser, second condenser. Just I have placed this to impress upon you. Your sample is here. When you are making a pro probe, it has to always form in such a way that it is there, uh, this thing. This is the design. What you, you cannot just have a probe, oscillate it anyway, you won't get this, this thing. It has to always come, the incidence on the sample should be normal. This is a design illustrating that is done by this set of uh, design. Okay. And now what you have is that your beam is there. It just comes at a small probe, and this is your sample. Sample, and this is a support. In this case, this is a support film, carbon film, on which you, are, you have gold particles, gold particles sitting there. Your beam is coming. Now, the beam is going to be scanned the same way what you do in SEM. SEM. Okay? Of course, you have made such that your whole design of the lens is such that it's always uh, 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 normal. The beam is the axis is normal to the, this thing. Uh, we don't do that much of effort in SEM to do that, but here it is essential. Okay, that is what we do. Now, after going through that, the scattering takes place. It's a purely inelastic scattering. Okay, so inelastic scattering. 
you have your detectors you have your detectors this is a bright field detector this is a adoff detector we call it a angular dark field detector uh, there will be one more detector which will be high angle angular dark field detector that will be extension of that here only a stem part is illustrated with this figure now this detector which is a circular one circular one is uh, just not going to worry about what is coming in the central okay it's just going to ignore that now after scattering when the scattering is taking okay whatever has been scattered very strongly goes to the goes away from the center and you have your detector collecting what has been scattered quite a bit away and that way when each when the probe is falling at one place whatever that scattering is con uh, happening that you gather and keep assigning to uh, like your SCM you were scanning point by point you were probing point by point that information is just taken and a image is created similar thing is done here scanning transmission electron microscope your sample is transmitting you said because it's thin you just place it whatever that scattered intensity grab it put it you have another mode again this gives the atomic resolutions possible so this is a picture you see this dimension here this is 40 nanometer you see many of these particles are all uh, a few nanometer scale now uh, this is the uh, uh, stem bright field dark field okay like what you can do in a regular imaging a regular uh, uh, bright field dark field in a TM mode using a parallel beam you are able to get an image which is in the uh, 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 stem mode uh, the image resolutions what you obtain in stem can go to atomic dimensions this cannot happen in a regular uh, ima imaging regular bright field dark field imaging there is a, a limitations of the uh, uh, numbers what you can go here you can just go to real atomic scale illustration I will show okay uh, this is a bright field image okay bright field TM micron meter probe this is a nano probe add off image okay add off image uh, we, you have that uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, better design of that um, detector with that this quality of image what you are going to obtain here it is shown this is the the uh, uh, your uh, uh, typical silicon structure silicon structure this uh, you see that projection if you can recall that will be a, a, a dumbbell shape atom configuration when you are seeing looking through the um, uh, silicon uh, uh, this thing okay that is what it is like and um, this is the adaptive image see we are able to go to the sort of uh, scale here okay you are able to just reveal this at atomic scale we'll see similar thing how we obtain high resolution high resolution is one thing we'll compare some images will be there to compare what is your stem add off image which also gives uh, almost atomic resolution versus what you do with the face contrast a uh, regular HR term images so that is what it is like okay um, uh, this is um, if you obtain a um, HR term image using your usual that broad beam that is the image as against that if you go to stem you just get uh, the information more localized and atomic scale like okay and how far we have been able to take that technique that technique has been taken to real revealing atomic scale uh, 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 information that is what illustrated here this is adolf stem okay uh, that is what it is this is a grayscale images you see this is the typical image what has been oh, these are uh, uh, EDS analysis this thing yields uh, this thing this is the add off image okay add off image this is from the yields electron energy loss spectroscopy you are identifying what is sitting where so here that is the result this is the EDS part you are just collecting the x-ray emitted and looking at the x-ray identifying what element is where 
and this is a image to just show how the atoms are uh, uh, placed like and um, that is where it is like and this of course coloration uh, is added so that way you see that that is better well, this is the actual grayscale image what you will obtain this is a spurious color added so that is what it is now you see each atom okay here is colored differently to show that uh, here we have the uh, uh, gallium and arsenic okay and um, that is how the gallium is shown in green color arsenic is shown in uh, uh, red color that is where we have been able to take the technology okay possibilities analysis capability to atomic scale imaging atomic scale uh, the spectroscopic information okay that is what we are able to illustrate in this slide like okay and uh, this is again one of those uh, uh, adaf images stem images okay uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a medium angle okay medium angle uh, high angle uh, is uh, you call it a adaf image and uh, this is uh, the a, um, the um, uh, uh, if you see c that is supposed to be the uh, line profile okay line profile of these intensities how the intensity vary that is what is shown here and this is the actual modeling from where you can show what atom is what so uh, c is uh, uh, the, this is basically boron nitride okay um, red uh, in red color boron is shown in red color and your um, yellow color is supposed to be carbon and um, nitro uh, green color is your nitrogen and this is blue is oxygen so uh, that has been uh, just uh, revealed so that is how that we are able to uh, uh, analyze and reveal things at uh, the set of atomic scale now let us uh, just uh, uh, just that much to talk about uh, stem let us look into actual phase contrast and phase contrast the earliest phase contrast images which was obtained when we talked about when the resolutions were very poor was this moire contrast moire is nothing but you have one crystal lattice over which you have going to superimpose one more lattice okay and depending on the angles okay or it can be because of the angular if it is the same uh, uh, um, this thing phase then by changing the angles you will just get this fringes obtained similarly if there is any change in lattice parameter that will reflect as beads in your this thing that is how the initial uh, phase contrast uh, images were obtained i'll just illustrate that and then i'll just uh, show some of the structural imaging and all those sort of this thing i'll show some illustrations on what we call as a lattice imaging and many beam imaging and structural imaging so this all this we will illustrate uh, uh, with the examples like uh, this is a typical moire okay <coughs> typical moire and the magnification is about 5 lakhs this is one crystal this is another crystal okay this is of course the uh, matrix phase okay or even it can be a single phase where all other portions is not scattering uh, that is the case there okay it's a it's a matrix or a material which is nano crystalline material and uh, you are just uh, in in that particular situation only these two crystals are these crystals are in strong diffracting conditions all others are not scattering so that's how the background looks bright and uh, 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 that is the the background that is the background and um, this is one crystal that is the other crystal they are placed one over the other not necessarily they should touch there is one lattice below that there is another lattice and that overlap will lead to a pattern by analyzing that pattern you can tell that how much it is misoriented and some of those information you can just obtain that is the the one uh, uh, moire pattern sort of scenario that is what it is that two crystals placed uh, yeah mm. Mm. Uh, there is another crystal here as i told that it's a polycrystalline material okay 
there is a more more crystallites like that also has come in that's why the fringe pattern here changes changes here there is another crystal in fact this and all if we slightly tilt okay all this these crystals may become like this and some other crystals which are here will just start into contrast coming into contrast so that is what it uh, um, uh, happens like uh, basically by tilting what we are doing is we are bringing different um, uh, crystallites to the song diffracting conditions they are going to diffract only they are when they are satisfying your Bragg conditions like so uh, uh, that sort of situations so like in your XRD when you are doing you see the peaks only where the Bragg condition is satisfied similarly here unless they are just in some orientations, okay, they are going to scatter, not scatter. The electrons are just going to go through, through and through, like, okay. That's what it is like. Yeah, these are uh, sometimes a challenge. You can always uh, just get duped and uh, that is where the interpretation becomes a little tricky, okay. And uh, that's what it is. Now, let me just uh, put uh, actual HR term what we mean uh, by, okay. Um, so, uh, the resolution <laughs> criteria you are aware of uh, the resolution criteria what we have the abyss uh, uh, description if there is any object if you are sending a plane wave plane wave okay and it just goes through and uh, there is the, uh, the scattering event taking place so each of the in our uh, microscopy sort of situation um, we have our material in thin form it is crystalline or it can be even be amorphous now the atoms are the scatterers and you are sending the beam, electron beam. Your electron beam is coming as a plane wave. Okay, it is highly coherent, monochromatic. That is the wave you are going to send that just goes through the sample. And it sees this electron, uh, the atoms and it interacts. Each atom is a scatterer. That is what it is like. Because of that, there is a, this, uh, 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 because of scattering what happens is, the image of a spot is no longer a spot. It is a distribution of intensity. And the intensity distribution has a typical nature. There is a central peak and it just uh, has a sinusoidal character. Somewhere it goes zero, again the first minima, second minima, third minima, that sort of thing happens. That is what is that. The diffraction effect leads to that. That is shown here. This is a single spot. And if you have one more spot, then how close you can take these two spots? Okay, if you bring it closer than certain limit, then the, the, the intensities overlap and you don't reveal them as two and it is seen as a single this thing. As against that, there is a, a criteria, Rayleigh's criteria, which tells that if you bring this much, okay, close, then you will be able to reveal it as two. Closer, you just don't see that. These are the two concepts which we use to uh, define resolution okay and uh, so that is the resolution uh, formula okay uh, Rayleigh's criteria um, to just uh, uh, um, other thing this is what happens you have a, a, a wave okay you have a wave which is coming and just atom is there just it is interacting as it is interacting its a phase changes and uh, that is what it is, a plane wave is sent, it sees a, a scatterer and then spherical waves are created. All these spherical waves are created by each and every atom. And when we reconstructed, construct that high resolution picture, okay, so many atoms are there, you have sent a plane wave, each one of them created a spherical this thing, all that just superimpose interfere. And that uh, high resolution image, what you get, is a actually interpretation, interpre uh, interference pattern. That is what it is. That is what you get as a image. That is where it is. Some of these expressions and all are there. Okay. Um, uh, basically, you have the sample is there. You are sending a plane wave. And it just enters. That is your initial wave given by this wave, wave uh, uh, function. Okay. That is your uh, 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 initial wave. Okay, no, this is an exit wave. Okay, after going through that, okay, it just uh, will, uh, uh, it, it sees the whole potential field of the sample. 
and then it, when it is exiting, it's carrying all the interaction information in that wave. So you analyze that. Okay. Uh, uh, in fact, that image, because of that, the image is created. Now we talked about diffraction in X-ray. Because of diffraction, you get a diffraction pattern. And the diffraction patterns are nothing but the images or sections through reciprocal space. Reciprocal space. So that is what is the, the thing like. Here, uh, when we talk about um, uh, high resolution images, these are actually sections through your whole electron densities, the whole potential. You have atoms, okay. Individual atoms has a, its own potential distribution and all. Uh, that you uh, design or explain by various uh, typical potential. Leonard Jones potential and uh, some of those sort of potentials, whatever you, those things. That is how you try to model it in that way. Now, you bring atoms together. Then you know that all the, uh, the electron potential starts overlapping. You have a band structure coming in. And then once a solid is built, you just have some electron charge distribution. Basically, your high resolution pictures are photographs of this electron charge distribution. That is where it is like. Now, depending on how the charges, of course, they, it is going to be there uh, in uh, some distribution. Okay, you know again the concept that any atom is there, the charge because of that is to be found far, far away even at infinity theoretically. That is what it is. So once they are all there, they just interact and then there is a potential line. So that is the concept line. Okay. Now, when uh, in a HR term, what you are doing is you are sending this parallel incoming beam. This is your sample specimen. Okay. Of course, if it is crystalline, it is going to have your regular uh, uh, atoms like that. If it is amorphous, there is no periodicity in that form, but still the scattering event is going to take place. Okay. And because of that, the pattern is going to have some special characteristics. The image also will have to show that it is amorphous. That is where it is. If it is crystalline, it should show a periodic ordered structure. If it is not, then it should show a amorphous character. Both will be revealed in a high resolution image. That is what it is like. And you have your uh, uh, beam coming. It just uh, goes through. <coughs> After transmitting or passing through this, okay, your exit wave is there. That exit wave is just grabbed by or used in your image formation. Now various lenses are there. Okay, and uh, a sequence of lenses. Here we are showing one lens. Okay, objective lens. Okay, one lens is shown, but there are uh, a series of lenses. Now what happens is, okay, because of this whole this thing, the information is not perfectly transmitted. It is distorted quite a bit. Unless you understand how it has been distorted, this this uh, information what you obtain as a just an image at the exit surface is of no value. You don't have anything to tell or interpret or see, nothing is there. So that is where you have to develop a systematic theory or your whole image analysis interpretation is ba based on a well-founded theory. Okay. Now, uh, let us try to appreciate some uh, basics. Uh, um, here is uh, a point. This is the function which explains that the point and here is a optical system. This point, uh, uh, this thing, uh, once the optical system is there, this is the basically your object space. This is the image space and this is uh, uh, the, the, in the image space, this point becomes a disk. That is because of your abyss. Uh, uh, kind of, uh, this thing, theory, okay. There is uh, this thing, scatterer is there, you send a radiation, okay. And after interacting with that, a point does not become a point, in the image space it becomes a, a disk. That is what is the abyss uh, theory like. And we are not seeing the other whole profiles, this thing, we are just, just uh, uh, showing here only the main first peak, say. 
all other uh, these things is there. Somewhere it goes to zero, again reappears, all that fluctuation is there. But that is what it is like. And um, that is uh, uh, shown by this, this uh, whole expression like. Okay? And uh, you have your uh, function, this is uh, correlated with this, and this is your image space, and this is position vector, sort of this thing. This is a convolution, okay, convolution, well, that is what is happening. This optic system is bringing in this function, okay, that is what it is, that. That is a spread function or distortion function. If you want to call it a distortion, the whatever modification that we can call as a distortion function. That's what happens. Now, the whole thing, that definition what we showed here, this is in real space, okay. And uh, we can just place that in, uh, in uh, Fourier space or uh, we can just uh, look into the reciprocal space. When we want to put that expression in reciprocal space, I will keep the mathematics very minimal, okay, because it just has to be uh, appreciated means very extended uh, discussions have to be there. But I am just putting some expression and uh, just highlighting how it implicates or has uh, significance in real image formation like. So, this is what it is like, this is a reciprocal space. The same expression what we had earlier, this was a G R, instead of R now, it is U, it is a reciprocal vector, it is a, a definition in reciprocal space and this is your distortion function, okay. And what all contributes into that, it need not be one source, these are many sources. So, this uh, has contribution from these uh, sources, there are more at least here at this structure, we can just consider this, okay. There is aperture, when you are doing, you know, there, there are various places in the whole scheme of lenses, there are apertures. The aperture will have a contribution of its own to this whole scattering process. Yeah, your atom was there, plane wave we were sending, okay. That was doing some scattering, that information is there. But over that, another superposition comes, you know that at any um, straight edge, there is going to be diffraction, there is going to be another contribution that adds up and then there is a, what is called as a attenuation wave that is the envelope function. We will see later what all includes in this envelope function and there is a aberration function, okay, aberration contribution that is the aberration con con uh, um, uh, contribution. Where from the aberration comes? That comes from the lens. Because in uh, electron microscope, you have electron lenses. Maybe a bit of that is already told to you. There are varieties of uh, aberrations or uh, lens defects, which we have to live with in our electron microscope. So that's what puts a cutoff of the whole microscope uh, resolution capabilities like. One of the important uh, uh, aberration is a spherical aberration, then the chromatic aberration, then the astigmatism. These three lens defects are uh, uh, are, are really core to or uh, uh, in deciding uh, what is the final resolution you are able to obtain. All these are there that uh, has to be uh, the, that is just in this particular function. Now when we want to just uh, we had our plane wave, we have some equations and all, then we had our exit wave and uh, because it goes through the lens, it has various contributions. All these contributions you have to decode or see what is contributing how much. Then only you will be able to interpret your image systematically or rigorously. That is the exercise that has to be handled like, okay. Um, there is various approximations. One is this weak phase object approximation, okay. And um, uh, if you take as it is the potential, then the potential has to be modeled this way. You see exponential coming, it is uh, difficult to handle, okay. And if you can make some approximation, then you can simplify the whole expression, so that you can put that expressions and find out the theoretical computed or calculated one has to match with the experimental one. Like many of the x-ray, uh, the thing what you have been uh, seeing also, we have some experimental values, it has many things put together. And now we have to decode uh, or at least rigorously scientifically explain that. Then we have to do many of the modeling or analysis and all, try to figure out what is there, then separate out 
that is what even the whole the line profile analysis what uh, uh, professor has been talking about uh, professor Ungar has been talking about is just to decode line profile is there but what are, what are all the contributions you have to separate out and analyze. Similar thing we have to do here, we have to handle. So, we make some simplistic assumptions and one of the assumptions is this weak field. In that weak field um, uh, uh, assumption, we say that the sample is very, very thin, okay, very, very thin and uh, that is essential to do obtain high resolution images also. And if I correlate to that thickness, Minima when we say very very thin or the potential okay this one okay is uh, uh, very small when compared to that okay when we have to have that approximation what it means is your plane wave is coming and in the exit wave whatever is coming either the, elec the electrons in the exit wave have seen just one scattering event or any scattering event at all that is the assumptions like okay. So, basically you know that there is a minimum uh, free path for electrons. Electrons are accelerated to some voltage, that very high to voltage. Here we use at least uh, in HR term, we use uh, 200 kV or 300 kV as accelerating voltage. Then it comes with the wavelength. Then when it is going through the material, it is going to see scatterings here and there. And that scattering mean path you have to take and this thing. And if we take that scattering mean path associated with wavelength and see the sample dimension, the sample dimension should be made so thin that it sees just one scattering or no scattering at all. No scattering means it just penetrates as if it has not seen anything. That is the concept like, just it goes through without seeing anything at all. Uh, that is the uh, minimal uh, or uh, uh, that is the handleable scenario, then you put expressions and all, then this becomes a, uh, this sort of simplified expression, okay, this becomes a simplified expression, where was that simplified expression, maybe it is there in the next this thing, that is one simplification what we do, okay. And uh, this is the, that, uh, that expression uh, what uh, the, in the whole distraction function, this is the contribution coming from the spherical aberration, okay. This is one which is very, very, very important to handle to get a high resolution. That is why it is being the thing like, okay. Then this can be, this whole expression can be written in this form and all. Then there is what is called as a transfer function, okay, contrast transfer function. This is called as a transfer, contrast transfer function, okay, uh, okay. That is the contrast transfer function, what you have. And uh, let us, uh, for a, weak uh, phase object uh, approximation. It becomes very, very complicated if you take the real case scenario. If you make your real case scenario is your sample is too thick, okay, too thick. That is a sort of real case scenario, then your whole, uh, your this thing becomes complicated, computation becomes difficult or very, uh, all those sort of things will happen like. So that is where high resolution is best done when the sample is very, very thin your sample, if it is uh, um, uh, uh, 10 nanometer thickness, is a sort of upper limit. Even 20 nanometer is a little bit uh, sort of too thick a thing like. In that case again, that weak uh, uh, phase object uh, uh, approximation has broken, even if it is 20 nanometer thick. That is where it is. But still, that is where it is. We live in realities, okay. That is uh, the sort of uh, the thing like. Now, the phase distortion function, okay, this is the term phase distortion function, okay, this has contribution from this, okay, this is from spherical aberration, defocus and astigmatism. All this is contributing to this distortion function, that distortion function is shown here. Uh, this is a defocus, okay, this is the uh, uh, defocus, this is the defocus, this is the CS and um, uh, uh, that is what it is like, this is the expression like, okay. Um, in this uh, probably this is also fully corrected. Uh, we, we, we say that we again assume that astigmatism is fully taken care of, only we are now having to live with or handle spherical aberration, so with that. Just we will see the, how the curve looks like, so that has uh, implications in uh, our other thing. Like, okay, that function, 
that contrast transform function, that chi, what we were seeing, if you plot that, that has this typical characteristics. The axis is not shown here, okay, the another one will show. This is the, the uh, reciprocal space vector and this is that function, this is zero, this is positive side, this is negative side, that's what it is like, okay. Now you have, uh, uh, this is something basic to appreciate, to relate what we see in HRTM, okay. And when we see the dots, something was looking dark and something was looking bright. Where is the atom sitting? Okay, or when we, how we relate this to real, we told that these are all relatable to the real crystal atomic order, how it is placed and all. Whether it is really true, we have to systematically place it in a proper mathematical background. That is the essential background line. So if you see this contrast transfer function, okay, it is oscillatory. It just keeps going, this is positive, uh, this is zero, positive negative it is oscillating, okay. Because here itself you saw that, okay, here we see that the sine function, okay. So that is where it is a oscillatory function, okay. And when this value is negative, this is the negative side, when it is negative, positive phase contrast, we call it, arbitrarily we call it positive phase contrast occurs in that situation, meaning that atoms will appear dark on a bright background, that's what it is. You have a scatterer, if it is scattering, intensity should disappear, then it should look darker. That is what the scenario when the, phase, the transfer function is having a negative value and that we call as a positive phase contrast and then in that image what I showed with dots and dark and bright dots. Okay, whatever is dark is a location of the atom. And if that goes positive, here it has gone positive. Okay, that is where it is, positive. Negative phase contrast occurs, meaning atoms will appear bright in a dark background. In that image itself, unless you are sure that where you are in that whole, this thing, you don't know. You cannot just say that from one image, this is my atoms are looking bright, you cannot say unless you have this information. So that is how that once that image is there, immediately all the dark or bright ones, you put at the center, I measure some distance, tell something, something, it is not very correct like. That is the essence of it, okay? And uh, uh, um, that is this thing. When it is equal to zero, these values, these places, means no contrast is transferred, it is a zero, okay? It is blank, that time you don't see anything, that is the um, uh, uh, message from that. That contrast function, now you see that that is the expression. Okay, you have this, you have this, these are parameter. Depending on how CS is varying, this is how it is varying. Okay, it is just changing. You see for three, that is the set of character and this thing, this is a reciprocal space. Okay, you see here, okay, U, it is nanometer inverse, nanometer inverse. That is the reciprocal space, this thing. Okay, here, it is shown as a variation with respect to this. You are keeping this as a constant, constant and then changing this. So how it is going to vary? Now let us see a bit more about this, what is the relevance of that, okay. Now Scherzer, uh, this is another important concept, okay. Scherzer appreciate, add a look at that possibility. Then he, just uh, uh, that expression what we had. From that, you just can optimize, okay, some of those parameters. You had one parameter is CS, one parameter is lab, uh, lambda, the wavelength itself, okay. Once your KV is fixed, 200 KV or uh, 300 KV, lambda is fixed. Then you have, okay, you are this thing, uh, 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 this uh, defocus, and this is the uh, spherical aberration. Then he found out that by you saw that nature was changing. I'll just relate what is this flatness uh, in a short moment now, okay. Uh, so he just saw that how the characteristics are there. He found out that if you do a optimal defocus, not exact focus, in a optimal defocus, you have the best possible resolution. So that is the concept and that comes from, uh, this is the optimal defocus value. With that optimal defocus value, Okay, I'm keeping tab on time also. Okay, 
and um, optimal defocus. Uh, all right. Once you have that optimal defocus value, now you can fit in into that expression. Okay. This uh, again uh, becomes uh, uh, handleable, or you are yourself uh, playing with that. Anyway, this comes with the microscope as a package. Your lens is designed. That is there anyway. That you cannot change. Okay. That is a thing which is associated with the lens. Now, what you had is a capability to focus, defocus. Okay. By putting a defocus, a little negative and some number, you get the best resolution possible. So that is what he showed, and that is what is the number here, R uh, structure. And that is the way, that is the expression. You know the lambda for whatever kb you this thing, you know the, uh, this one associated with your microscope. That is sometimes, usually it is uh, uh, just uh, um, uh, 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 1 mm or 2 mm or 3 mm, that is uh, CS. Okay? That is the spherical aberration coefficient. Once you put this numbers, then for your microscope, what is that smallest size revealed? that is uh, just comes out. When the company guys give the numbers to their microscope, what they give is this number. They fit in this number. They have designed their lens with some capability. We are putting the acceleration voltage. Once that is put, whatever this number comes, that's what it gives. Whether it is finally achieved, that is another thing. Many things contribute to finally what we achieve. Okay. Now, okay. Um, other features. You see that it, uh, the contrast transfer function starts at some point and it goes negative. Okay, starts at zero and decreases, decreases. Then it has a typical character. Okay, typical character. In an ideal case, ideal case, what should have been this is a step function. It would have just gone, just a, a straight this thing. That is how it would have gone. If there is not going to be any aberrations involved and all, it would have been a contrast transfer function would have been a step function. But all other contributions make it to take that typical contour. Okay. And it starts and increases, at, at some stage it just goes and has that character and then starts going to positive and again goes to this sort of oscillation. In principle, this oscillation will keep on going like that for a very fairly long distance. That's what it is in principle, but depending on the microscope characteristics, it will be damped out. Okay, that also I'll illustrate in a minute. Okay, that's what happens. Now, the message here is that if you are just having within this band your sizes, this, uh, this is one time it just goes to zero. Before that, before it goes to zero, whatever that in that reciprocal space we would have had that number. We are not having this axis is putting some of this thing, but still that this thing within that before the first zero goes, whatever is there in that reciprocal space, that will have a contrast which is explainable contrast. Okay, I'll just relate it a little bit more. Okay, with the more illustrations like okay, I can just uh, this thing. That is what it is. Okay, this is how your typical function will keep on uh, oscillating. But there is a, something called an envelope function which just puts a cutoff. So there is a, this way it doesn't go on uh, 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 that many oscillations. Before that, the machine puts some more, fund some more parameters which damps it out. Then all that you can just uh, 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 study is within this limits like well, within the limit of this envelope function. Beyond this envelope function, you cannot see anything at all. In a typical Micro, okay, uh, that I'll just relate with the illustration. That will be better. Okay, now uh, this is what it is. Okay, a few oscillations, then the envelope function. This is the nanometers in nanometers. This is in dimensions in nanometers. Okay, that's what it is like. You see this this relationship, reciprocal relationship. This this axis is, is shown in the reciprocal space. This is the real space dimensions. As these numbers keep increasing, these numbers become smaller and smaller and smaller. These are the spacings which can be really uh, 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 sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, revealed in your lattice imaging or when you are doing fine imaging. Those are the, uh, the things. Now, you see this is the upper limit. 
the point resolution limit. That is the limit. Whatever is coming within this band, that number for this, you see it is coming here. That is this number. In terms of nanometer, this means this it is 2.5 angstroms. Two point, for this case, it is 2.5 angstroms is the, is the region up to which there are details means you can just uh, reveal it or talk about it. Anything finer, there are details finer. As you see this, there are details far behind that, far beyond that. See the, the statement you can see. Information limit goes well beyond the point resolution. This is the point resolution. For a, uh, if you have this sort of gun, okay, for a lanthanum hexaboride or a tungsten, it ends up here itself. You don't have anything beyond that to see. Okay? But there is information here to see. If we can use a little bit of simulation, then you will be able to reveal details here also. But the actual cutoff here is a information limit. That's how when we talk about high resolution, we talk about two things. One is the point resolution, that is this. And there is another resolution, which is the information limit. Far beyond that, finer details are, you can reveal that. But unless you do some imaging and just really make that correlation, that's how any HR term work is done at various defocus values. That's what it is like. Okay, just uh, let me just show that with the illustration. Let me, okay, that's what it is. Just resolution, as it is, if you see, one or two angstroms, it is straightforward. So those images, whatever you see, dots and this thing, if you are talking about within that point resolution, you, are do, you can do without any simulation. You can take the numbers. If you want to look at the finer details, then precision, you can increase to this. At least uh, 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 two orders beyond, you can see. If you want to go to these set of levels, Okay, then you have to just uh, do that set of simulation. Okay, okay, uh, let me just, uh, because the time is this thing. Okay, I'll illustrate that with this. See, you have this high resolution image. This was one of that. Now, this is where your first uh, despacing is coming. That is this despacing. Finer one is coming here. That is this despacing. You see, this is finer, finer. Third one is coming here. That is this. You see they are finer and finer. These are greater and greater here in real space. These are finer and finer in this thing, uh, this space, re uh, reciprocal space. Now, to just, uh, if you want to exploit this sort of finer details which just goes beyond this, then requires that modeling and simulation. So by modeling and simulation, you can just go to even a fraction of your angstroms and get that, this thing like. Okay, analysis done. Okay, now this is uh, some of the information limit concept. Now to get that information limit, there are various other parameters which goes into that envelope function. All this goes into contributing towards that even envelope function. Spence drift, vibration, many of those sort of things add up to the design, defining how far this envelope function goes. Okay, and um, uh, uh, this is, uh, I think I can skip this. Okay. Um, one another thing I would like to uh, appreciate. This is the real space. Okay. Uh, uh, and this is the exit wave. Okay. This is the atom, uh, their locations and all. The um, this thing uh, sees that. At the bottom, the exit wave has this set of characteristics. Now the recorded images. You see, depending on the defocus value, defocus value, they are going, they are looking so different. See, these are all the image from this only, this only. Now they are going to look so different. Each action, what is completely dark in one this thing, for a certain defocus value, it completely reversed into a bright region. That's what it is. All this will happen. So that way, you have to take a series of defocus images and all. That's what it is. Now, this, this is another exercise one has to do to get uh, this uh, imaging. Here again, there is an illustration to show you. Okay, uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a high temperature superconductor. 
Again, these are the different Dufour-Coase values. These are the thickness. Again, as the thickness is going to vary, what is going to happen is the amount of potential that has seen, the sample what it has gone through differs. If it is going to go through more material, then the potential value what it has seen, electron potential is going to be different. So that will also keep changing that how the image is going to look at like. So those also has to be handled. That's how any rigorously done HRTEM work always has to look for different defocus values and do a little bit of simulation and then correlate the image and uh, uh, the those thing like. All right. Now I'll run through a few illustrative examples in the next five minutes. Okay. And uh, this is uh, one uh, this thing what we have done. This is a high resolution what we have done with our um, 200 kV machine with the tungsten filament with the it's the lowest uh, uh, whatever you coherency and whatever possibilities like. Okay, that is where it is. And <coughs> this is the image and uh, this is a, a superconductor this thing shape memory alloy. This is a NITI phase. This is a second phase which is to be found. This interface we have seen. And that is the image of that uh, second phase particle. That is the typical image, raw image what you have obtained. This profile, when you want to see that, that is the profile, okay, intensity profile. To find out these uh, spacings, you can just uh, put this cursor and then it gives that numbers, okay. That's what it is. That is uh, the uh, lattice image, okay. In this situation, we are having these parallel lines. That's not a structural image. This is the parallel lines. That is one set of planes revealed. This is uh, the other set also revealed, okay. There's a two set. There is one set of planes. This one, that is also revealed in this structure. And now that is the raw image which was obtained. You can take a simulated image, create a simulated image. You can just, the software is uh, there, okay. You can take a FFT. From that you can put a simulated image. This is the simulated image for that region. Okay, this is a raw image and uh, this is the inverse FFT, uh, what you can obtain, that is superimposed here. That's the raw image what we have obtained, with the whatever is our uh, capability with that, this is the uh, uh, simulated image. So you can just, this is the actual image, from that you can just use as that uh, the, this thing and obtain a simulated pattern for that, that FFT, that is the Fourier transform. For this uh, order arrangement, periodic arrangement, what is that pattern? That is the pattern. That is a simulated pattern which you can obtain. Again, the microscope software provides that option. Okay. And then by just after taking that, this is the simulated pattern. From there, you can choose what to contribute. You are just going to take this and that is where all others are removed and these are taken. You can create a simulated image. That is what has been done. You take only this, that is the lattice image. You take only this, that is the lattice image. And what does these points interfere with, sir? Huh? What does oh, this is the diffraction spots. Yes, this is the diffraction part. This is the diffraction part. <coughs> these are theoretical diffraction pattern. See, as it is, the material would have given a pattern. That pattern also is there. And that pattern you used to obtain this image. Now, Using this image, you can obtain a theoretical pattern for that. That theoretical pattern is this. Okay. Then, using this theoretical pattern, now I can just remove all the other thing. I can create a theoretical image, which is a simulated image. That is what is this. Only use these two planes, then that is the image. Basically, what you are doing is only allowing those waves to just uh, interfere and create a pattern. Then it will be a periodic that sort of oscillation. Similarly, you allow only this, that is the pattern. Now, you allow, allow all of them, that is the, this thing. That is the basis, how the whole, uh, this thing happens, imaging happens, okay. Or uh, high resolution picturization happens. That is the simulated image, okay. And uh, that is the simulated image using all this, this thing like, okay. Now, I should be going. So, in a, if it is a amorphous material, there is going to be no spots. You are going to get a amorphous ring. That is the amorphous ring. So for that, that is the amorphous structure, a high resolution. I told that even if it is amorphous, the structure has to show amorphous. You see that there is uh, no long range order. So that is what it is that like, okay. 
and if there are some dislocation discontinuities you should be able to reveal that that is what we have been able to do that okay here is a extra off plane that can be visualized okay so that is what it is uh, uh, uh. this is also more elegantly we are able to see that we had a very poor filament for sort of this thing like but still within that we are able to do that if you have a better machine like titan has arrived and it's available for the past two months we can do this sort of elegant work more elegant work as i illustrate by using that machine okay these are again some illustrations this is a typical dislocation and this is the hrtm image this is a nanoparticle okay all these dots whether it is bright and dark you know now i should not be telling their atomic locations or whatever it is that always when we say that it goes with that contrast transfer function like okay uh, again these are nanoparticles and this is a boundary okay this is a boundary this is a one this is the uh, boundary and these are the dislocations at the boundary and this is a more high angle relative to this you see the periodicity of this boundary is uh, increase this is a, a very high angle there is no correlation at all okay this is a real crystal icosahedral crystal if you take prepare a sample from this and put it in the microscope and see what you would have seen okay you should have seen the lattice that five fold the aperiodic arrangement you should have seen periodic arrangement how it comes so the, again this is icosahedral crystal see this is the actual image that is the image that is the suggested tiling to explain the structure you have to explain that that is the suggested tiling this pattern the electron diffraction pattern from here if you take that is the five fold symmetry pattern okay it shows 10 fold here okay so that is the five fold inversion symmetry that's what leads to that that is the forbidden symmetry that comes that this is the actual pattern for this as well you can take this and obtain a simulated pattern this is the simulated pattern this is the simulated pattern so this is just to show this thing uh, uh, nanotechnology nanotubes are of great interest and this is a single wall tube these are a single wall tube there is a single tube and this is a single tube looking through the diameter that is what it is like and you know that various chirality and all those possibilities in single wall nanotubes that is some illustrations and how the tip of the tube gets closed that can be just uh, imaged using a high resolution and this is many in situ possibilities of experimentation is there here what is being monitored is growth of the boron nitride and as the growth is occurring at various stages you can take the images that is the time okay now when these are there you see something whether it is really boron nitrate you have to confirm that then you take this and take a simulated pattern or take a diffraction pattern actually experimental and you have this structure which is modeled structure for modeled structure what should be the pattern which should be seen you take that and compare it with your experimental image that is how you just correlate it and say make sense out of whatever you are seeing that that is uh, some of those sort of work okay and uh, here is a single nano uh, wall nanotube and you can put things inside and you can cook up things or conduct a uh, certain processing inside that is what it is that so this like yes so that sort of uh, uh, it's similar but uh, here is a uh, uh, molecules or uh, uh, things formed in that constrained environment some macromolecules getting formed okay i think that i'll just uh, take this few minutes to run through the eds possibility okay i have uh, uh, the thing so because uh, the earlier talk was not covering eds that's how i was requested to cover a little bit eds you would have seen in scm we were able to take the x-ray and make analysis eds analysis okay mapping and uh, uh, all those sort of elemental distribution and all these things can be done in a, a tm in a lot lot different way okay the, the basis is same but uh, uh, that is the basis okay you have that x rays generated and you have that basic formula okay there are three components the major components uh, deductor processor this thing this is the whole configuration you have the tm that is the deductor part then you take that x ray and deduct that that is a typical deductor how it works 
okay you have a x-ray coming and we have this silicon lithium doped uh, silicon and once this comes here it that x-ray photon is converted into electron hole pair by counting how many electron hole pair is there then you see that how much is the energy you know that per electron hole pair certain energy is required in silicon you just calculate from there and just compute that is what is done x-ray photon photon by photon it is just picked up analyzed is energy uh, diagnosed from there we tell that okay this is the possibility that is how the x-ray is analyzed and uh, uh, that is the configuration you have your pole face this upper pole face lower pole face sample is sitting there detector is sitting there okay when the the sample when you are just keeping there that is the thin edge uh, the whole x-ray is generated is picked up from there okay the basic expression what you do for quantification okay you have your standard versus intensity observed if it is so simply related then you have a very simple possibility of analysis but what happens is this Zaf corrections are required like these corrections are required what is these corrections this is there probably this is already discussed in SCM so those are there but if you are doing in TM you can afford to uh, ignore some of the corrections you can afford to ignore your F part A part in the Zaf you can just uh, uh, ignore absorption and fluorescence then your whole handling of the whole this thing becomes very very simple okay and uh, uh, then uh, there is uh, uh, this thing okay then uh, okay uh, uh, thin samples your corrections becomes very easy to make absorption and F can be just ignored and uh, then okay this is uh, some illustrations you see a microstructure there are various phases different phases okay now you see the marker here that tells the dimension in this, this thing now you can uh, uh, here is a phase okay the EDS from that is that you have this phase this phase the EDS from that is uh, where is that C that is what it is the EDS from that is that that one so you are able to go and take EDS acquired from sizes we will look at the actual sizes what we are able to handle as of at the least the technology is able to handle in a short while from now that is how you will get the spectra and analyze the, this thing imaging is possible this is a stem imaging these are for different elements you would have already been discussed about elemental mapping when SEM was discussed that is possible in TM also this is a cross-sectional device cross-section of a device this is what you get in a EPMA RA, um, um, RA SCM and in relation to that this is the sharpness with which you will be able to analyze in TM okay at least two orders of better analysis is possible okay only micrometer level is possible in EPMA and EDS whereas you can go to nanoscale uh, uh, resolutions uh, a few nanometers resolutions in that what is that finest we'll just see see that is the boundary okay that is the boundary and the very sharp boundary that's what you see okay now where is the advantage coming from in a bulk analysis of EDS you are having a large volume from below contributing by making it in stem mode okay making the sample very very thin making this probe one or two nanometer we are just brought down that to very very small region then the sort of capabilities see the the sort of uh, 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 in that sort of situation even a single atom is there of a particular element you will be able to identify this particular thing is there how is it illustrated we will just see say the deductibility it is possible to go down to single atom that is what it is that is to say that spectroscopic information from a single atom I have a material okay I have put some some uh, element uh, 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 arsenic I have put okay it is in a very very small quantity okay a single atom is going to sit here and there will I be able to show that that is possible that is what it is as per this okay um, now this is a, a diagram so these are uh, when you have a corrected uh, a microscope you are able to get information these are actually deductibility limit 
okay this is theoretical this is actual achieved see you are able to go to one or two atoms level that is where it is aberration corrected with the aberration correction we are able to go to uh, uh, um, one angstroms or less that is where it is we are standing at this a fraction of angstroms when we are able to achieve that all these are possible like we can get very very small probes we can get a better contrast see this individual dots what you are seeing these are all atoms like okay this uh, let me this thing these are various versions of the microscope okay again uh, time is uh, this thing I'll just uh, uh, through this okay some of the numbers you can just appreciate from here as it stands the technology okay if you take uh, uh, energy filter TM spatial resolution is this with the ordinary TM with the aberration corrected TM it is just going to few angstroms if you take stem this is the yields stem yields with the ordinary time that means that either tungsten or lanthanum exaborate we say that lanthanum exaborate that is what it is with ab aberration even field emission gun inclusive that is the number you are able to go with the aberration corrected you are just again going to I will just give that exact numbers with the EDS again this is what is possible in usual aberration corrected this is what is possible we will just have that numbers in a table form this is what is the world record as it stands now okay beam diameter older stem with a new stem after aberration character you are having a probe of a fraction of a nanometer that is your probe size now beam current that is what it is this thing image resolution that is what is possible in a old stem okay it's a four angstroms we have just gone make that two angstroms that's what it is like uh, some of this this thing a minimal deductible mass with the world sum it is two three atoms as long as two three atoms are gold as there you are able to tell that yes gold is present now you have gone to a level as long as one or two atoms are present somewhere in the material you are going to tell you you are capable of tell or empowered to tell that yes this element is present that's what it is like okay uh, this is uh, some uh, imaging uh, this thing okay this I'll skip this is a stem EDS mapping what it shows here is the in atoms okay whatever is showing this bright is about 20 angstroms uh, 20 atoms whatever is in this color range is one or two atoms you see here this map the color distribution how many places is is one or two or three that sort of thing we are able to do mapping at atomic scale that is what it is elemental distribution at atomic scale that is what has been achieved like okay uh, this is that was in EDS mode this is in stem mode stem add off mode here here the signal used is incoherent scattering inelastic scattering inelastic not incoherent inelastic scattering okay is what is used and this what dots you are seeing that is a, a SB okay and uh, that is what it is like and uh, uh, there are a uh, few things this is the imaging what has been uh, what the quality that has been achieved okay and uh, this is again a uh, elemental mapping okay the elemental mapping taken to its uh, its uh, um, uh, the highest possibility that is what is shown here okay this is the material image of the material add of image you see these locations you see something is bright something is less bright so there are basically two different elements sitting in the lattice so that is not a high resolution microscope okay there is no ambiguity here about the contrast it is just what atomic number higher looks brighter and whatever atomic number lower that looks lighter so that is what it is no that uh, whole mapping high resolution you have to do many things to tell what is what here you have to do nothing just compare the intensities that's what it is so that is the image and this is the EDS map EDS optine that is the EDS map of those the coloration is purest as I showed that you could have just put the colors as per your wish that is where the red is all where the strontium is there that is where all the titanium is there so we are able to do imaging at atomic resolution we are able to anyway the fraction effect is there 
or it just relates to that this thing. And we are able to do spectroscopy at atomic scale. That is where the technology stands like. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, I left two minutes for your questions <laughs> before question or two. we just sir, you disperse for now. Probe is made up of which materials? Huh? Probe is what is that material and inside that probe which is touching? No, nothing. Nothing is touching. Probe is not really touching. The probe is here, just electrons. Okay, highly coherent electron beam wave. That is what it is. Now you are, you have to have a source which generates the electrons. Okay, the sources are different type. I think that uh, other speakers would have discussed. Or oh, you have tungsten filament, or lab six filament, or field emission gun. Okay, that is what it is. Electrons are generated. What is going to fall on the material is only the electron beam. Yeah? Uh, so, you talked about uh, medium angle annular dark field. So, there is a high angle annular dark field and annular dark field. So, is it uh, the between of these two? I do not think we have, uh, say, they would have had in the during the design period, they would have had that option. So, what we have is uh, uh, Mostly, if a high angle dark field is available, detector is available, that is what you use. Okay? Uh, that is where it is. If you do not have that privilege of having a high angle dark field, many other machines come with the, that annular dark field. The older machines did not have any of this. The later versions add at least the annular dark field. And add off high angle dark field, you will be able to purchase it separately as an optional item, giving uh, at least some 50, 60 lakhs extra. That is where it is Why like. Do need this, uh, medium angle dark well, you do not read it, okay, if only that is what you are having, you can image use that. So if you so are having a, a high angle annular dark field and annular dark field, like what is the benefit of this? See, the, the, the sort of uh, scattering, see, what you are just saying, by having a high angular dark field, you are just able to just to see strongly scattered uh, uh, intensity you are able to effectively pick up. Okay? That way, the, the range of elements what you can handle, the sensitivity with which you can identify them or image them will be enhanced by having a higher dark field. So, a high angle dark field is your beam is coming and entering. Okay? Most of your regular microscopy is usually done closest to the beam, closest to the beam and annular dark field goes a little farther than that and high angle annular dark field goes much more farther. It goes, it collects the uh, scattering from somewhere around uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, degrees to say 14 degrees. That is where it is. All other ones are ignored. The, the scattered electrons to that degree of scattering what comes that is what is picked up and image is recreated. So, that is where some advantages with respect to angle and when you are putting high uh, the uh, ad hoc images people will ask what is your detector this thing like. So, that we may have to tell like. Okay, so I think let us once again thank Professor Gautama for a wonderful talk. Okay.